Hi. Hi. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Dr. Vilas Patil and I am working as a postdoctoral student at Sangokwan University in South Korea. And I am presenting my research work here, which is mainly related with the narrow mating emitters. Uh, as you know, in OLED field, narrow emission has gained significant attention in recent years after discovery of uh, boron type of molecules by Professor Hatay Kame. Uh, boron type of molecule which we have seen recently shown improved performance in terms of lifetime and efficiency. However, they have some issues like uh, synthetic feasibility, age of synthesis and most of the boron molecules are emitting in uh, pure blue or sky blue region. So deep blue uh, still uh, need to be like uh, uh, boron type of molecules with deep blue emission are still rare. So here uh, comes the CN fusion strategy in the picture. The strategy is simply a carbon nitrogen chemistry unlike a boron molecules where uh, we can simply use carbon hydrogen and nitrogens and you can see here uh, simply by modifying the uh, fusion position we can change the emission properties from fluorescence emitter to the TRDF emitter. As we know the fluorescence emitter has uh, efficiency issue because of uh, uh, singlet exciton emission is only responsible for the emission. So we need a TRDF emitters. So in the CN fusion strategy you can see that by changing the fusion position we can change the emission property as well as the color of the emission. Uh, the first molecule is a metafused molecule where you can see the emission is a violet and the emission of it's a fluorescence emitter. But the second molecules where you can see the fusion is para with respect to each other and the molecule emits in a deep blue region and it's a TDF molecule. Uh, like a boron chemistry where we, you can see the homoluma are alternately separated because of the rigid structure and electronegativity difference of boron and carbon atom. Similarly, in this case also because of electronegativity of nitrogen and carbon, you can see the homoluma are alternately spaced in both the molecules as well as there is certain sort of uh, overlapping of the homoluma. So now this, this thing is very useful to uh, improve the emission property of the molecules. So ideally these molecules have significant uh, similar properties like a boron type of molecules and here you can see the performance of these molecules. Their emission uh, like a metaphyl DID which shows emission at pure violet region with very narrow FWHM of 22 nanometer and the very small stroke shift of 6 nanometer whereas the para uh, FLDID which shows red shifted emission at a deep blue color with 449 nanometer and a stroke shift of 26 nanometer which is quite small as uh, 13 nanometer sorry and FWHM of 26 nanometer which is almost uh, really small than the boron type of molecules. Now in this case you can see the uh, why, we, why I said uh, this molecule function as a fluorescence emitter because you can see the PLQI. The PLQI in presence of nitrogen and oxygen remains same for metaphyl DID whereas for para DID it has reduced from 97% to 33%. Uh, the further evidence for para DID as a tier emitter is its uh, time depend of tier dependent TRPL where you can see as temperature increase from 1000 Kelvin to 3000 Kelvin, 300 Kelvin, you can see clearly a delayed lifetime. So it shows that para DID functions as tier emitter. This, this is the synthetic scheme which you can see that uh, it's a simple procedure and the yield for first step is uh, more than 80 percent whereas for second step it is uh, in between 60 to 70 percent. Now after this photophysical properties we investigated the device performance of this molecule. For metaphyl DID we used mixed row system MCPTSPO1 and you can see with 1 percent doping concentration we got 4.4 percent efficiency and very narrow FWHM of 17 nanometer whereas for 3 and 5 percent uh, doping concentration we got more than 5 percent efficiency and below uh, 20, uh, 30 nanometer FWHM and emission in pure violet reason which is uh, one of the best report for the pure violet emitter so far reported. So you can see how the CN fusion strategy has advantage. Now let's move towards the para DID where uh, we got uh, 
maximum efficiency from one weight percent doping concentration is around more than 80 percent and an other FWHM of 23 nanometer whereas device C with 5 weight percent doping concentration has given more than 25 percent efficiency and an narrow FWHM of 33 nanometer. You can see the CIE Y coordinates for MetaFL as well as ParaFL DID. The CIE Y coordinates are below 0.03 percent whereas for ParaFL DID it is below 0.09. So that clearly shows that MetaFL, the CN fusion strategy is very important to get pure uh, violet as well as deep blue emitters with high efficiency and narrow FWHM. So in this way CN fusion strategy offer an alternate route way to achieve the desired uh, uh, best OLD performance. Of course there are few st uh, still modifications are needed and we are working on it. So um, j just as a little ob observation, so I watch these uh, shows that talk about pa uh, old painters that had problem getting blue hundreds of years ago. It's very difficult to get blue. And it sounds like with the OLEDs, there's also some kind of issue with the blue, right? Uh, yes, actually blue color, uh, blue emitting material require wide band gap. And uh, because of that, uh, it's difficult to like uh, uh, achieve that type of, uh, 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 I mean, uh, their lifetime is very low as compared to green and red emitting materials. So that's why uh, we have seen your uh, mobile phone uh, over some time they turns to yellow or uh, red. That happens because of a lower lifetime of blue color emitters. So we are trying to improve the lifetime, uh, we are trying to develop uh, blue emitters which having more lifetime and the second is we are trying to get emission narrow, narrow emission because uh, it offers high co color purity. Generally the TRDF and phosphorus emitter, they offer a broad emission. So it affects the color purity. So uh, using this type of strategy, we are also trying to narrow the emission so that we will have high bu uh, color purity. Are you going to have the lifetime the same as the the other ones? Uh, actually, these molecules having some lifetime issue because of their uh, large delta ST value. So we are working on it and we are incorporating few more strategy in the same strategy and that work is in a final step. So we have to wait if we succeed to enhance the lifetime of these molecules or not. So that I, I can... But it's improving. Uh, actually, we have to test the materials because I'm in the synthesis shape, so it is not yet done. So maybe in one or two months, I will finish the synthetic part. What do OLEDs do? So is it some kind of trick they're doing to make a fake blue or something? What uh, is a trick that they have to do? Mm. Or does it make any sense when I'm asking? Uh, like uh, when they have, let's say they have an issue with the blue. Uh, yes. What is this? What are they doing about it right now? Uh, actually, we are investigating a lot of different type of molecules because, of, as I said, the lifetime is the issue for blue emitters. So, TRDF molecules are the one currently uh, fluorescence emitter are used in uh, 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 production uh, in a commercial scale. Uh, because this fluorescence molecule have a good lifetime and uh, they are stable as compared to the TLDF and metal based phosphorescence emitter. So we are uh, trying to develop alternate strategy where we can uh, use uh, lifetime and stability advantage of fluorescence emitter as well as we can incorporate some strategy and we can enhance the uh, efficiency because uh, the ultimate target is uh, longer lifetime good color purity, high stability, and longer device lifetime. And cheap? Uh, yes. Is, is that's it why help that's, with that? That's, that's, that is something that's why we are avoiding metal-based uh, phosphorescence emitter because metal-based phosphorescence emitter... Then are, you have to get the metal out of the ground. Uh, yes, and they are like uh, heavy metal, platinum, or uh, oh, rare lipo complex. So Expensive. Rare yes. It's and like gold. Again, More apart expensive from than gold. that, uh, environmental issue is also there. So to avoid that, this type of strategy, because generally in pharmaceutical and all this, we use CN type of chemistry. So CN type of chemistry don't use any uh, boron, uh, any heavy atoms. So it is easy to synthesize without affecting like uh, using any metal. So that's why we are trying to develop this kind of molecules. And I hope that we will add more advantage. Have you already done some things that are in the market or you're hoping that your work goes and change the world. Uh, what is, of course, how as you a, feel? being a researcher, I always like that uh, whatever I'm doing or whatever my colleagues are doing, it should help industry because after all, our purpose is to help the mankind, mankind and uh, like 
avoid uh, uh, those the problem issues industry are facing. So, uh, being a researcher, it's my responsibility. We should address those issues, and we are trying for that. So, I hope. And everybody in the world needs to have access to this amazing technology. Of course, it needs to become more more affordable. Uh, yes, because everybody need to have right to access the technology. Being a human, it's our responsibility that we should help we everyone and everyone should get equal opportunity uh, for. We all deserve an OLED TV. <laughs> uh, that I cannot assure, but at least we should have a common TV where everyone can enjoy. Because, uh, of course, uh, having OLED TV for everyone is not possible, but we can have common OLED for service where many people can see it and they can watch and they can enjoy the same way the other do. Are the university in, in Korea is the best place to work on? Ah uh, yes, of course. Uh, yes, of course, because they have a lot of uh, like uh, Korea, uh, Japan, China. They are mainly mainly involved in uh, this type of work, material chemistry. So yeah, it's definitely a good opportunity and good place to work on material chemistry. On my YouTube, I just uh, published a video with the inventor of the OLED. Okay. He was just walking around, and he says it's such a great feeling to be a researcher and know that his work is changing the world. Of course, because what? Of course, uh, we don't want too much publicity. But if someone recognizes even a common person that yes, these these guys are doing something uh, to improve life of everyone, so that gives us uh, some pleasure that yes, we are doing something good. Of course, failures are always there. A lot of failures are there we face, but when us anyone comes and us yes. We have this, and that gives pleasure. That yes, we did something, and yes. Do you speak Korean? Uh, no, actually, I can read few words, but I can't. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Thank I you. hope you have enjoyed the uh, conference. Yeah.